What is so hard to understand about that? Never mind. A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Mathematicians. Today we are going to answer the age old question. When is the cosine of radians equal to the cosine of degrees? You can do this with the sine, tangent or whatever too, but it really doesn't matter. I just want to get a point across. This is one of the most annoying things as a teacher. And if you are a teacher yourself or ever taught students, then this popped up at some point. How am I supposed when I'm going to use degrees and when radians on my calculator? Oh no, I did mistake again. Why is my answer wrong? Go freak yourself in the eyes. You use degrees when there's a little decrease circle up there. You use radians when there is no decrease circle up there. And then you adjust your calculator <sighs> accordingly. What is so hard to understand about that? Never mind. To get rid of this pesky little problem, I decided to only use values now in my tests where the cosine of radians is equal to the cosine of decrease. I can't be bothered to be annoyed by that anymore. And now we're gonna find out when this is actually equal to. Try it out for yourself and keep watching the video. For the solution, by the way, I created a new channel, NP Cooking. It's a lot of fun. Watch the videos, it's so good. I have a lot of fun with those videos and you might do so too. Same humor as here over there too, so check it out. It's fun. Link down in the description. Now let's dive right in. So engineers might go, um, I might just use the inverse cosine on both sides, then we have x is equal to um, x degrees, and then obviously we can cancel out the x, meaning that uh, 1 is equal to degrees, and then they just call it quits for the day. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> but we are not engineers, we are mathematicians over here. So we are going to do it correctly. We can't obviously just use the inverse cosine on both sides, immediately, because we need to transform this a bit. But before we get into that, we need to find out um, what actually is um, a, a radian um, or, or a degree. How can you convert between those two? And then we can go ahead and get started using inverse trigonometric functions. So at first, let us go back a tiny little bit and let's see. So as a little reminder, pa corresponds to 180 degrees. Okay, this is just how pa has been defined. This is the conversion from radians to degrees, okay? But we also need to understand um, what is x degrees, for example, in radians. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna say um, how many radians are equal to how many degrees? And then we can just make use of cross multiplication here. x degrees is equal to t times 180 degrees divided by pa. So basically what you get out from this little equation right here is if you want to convert r degrees to some kind of radians, then what, or radians to degrees in that kind of way, what you need to do is you just multiply your factor right here by 180 divided by pa. This is how you convert between the two. And this is what we're going to apply here, meaning that the cosine of some value x is equal to, now let us use this definition on here, substituting the x for the t or the t for the x, is equal to the cosine of x times 180 divided by pa. Thus far, thus good. And with that out of the way, we can nearly use inverse trigonometric functions. The thing is, the cosine is not bijective over its whole domain. So what we need to do is we need to insert something to make it bijective and to use the inverse function. We are gonna insert plus two k pa here. Reason for that insertion is just that we wanna make the function bijective once again. Um, if you take a look at the graph and you can only use inverse functions if it's bijective, cosine looks like this. And the cosine of some value, whatever, is the same as the cosine of this value plus 2 k pi, where k is element of the positive and negative integers because 2 pi is here, for example, and 4 pi and so on. We get high spots every time we hit 2 pi, 4 pi, negative um, 70 pa. 
not 69, I'm, I'm very sorry about that. But if you shift it to the left, for example, by 2 pi, you are gonna get our original cosine once again with whichever value. And with that out of the way, our bijection is preserved. We can make use of the inverse cosine on both sides, giving us overall that um, if we cancel out the cosines with the inverse cosine, that x is equal to x times 180 divided by pi plus 2k pi. And now we can just simply solve this whole thing for x by subtracting this part on both sides, giving us that x minus x times 180 divided by pi is equal to 2k pi. And now what we can do is we can factor out the x here, giving us that x times 1 minus 180 divided by pi is equal to 2k pi. And now if we bring this onto a common denominator, we are going to get pi minus 180 divided by pi here. And this is obviously not equal to zero in any kind of way. And we can just multiply both sides by its reciprocal, its invertible, giving us that the value for x where this relationship right here holds is equal to, um, we are going to get uh, 2k pi times the reciprocal of this. So pi squared overall divided by pi minus 180. And this right here does the trick. So for example, I could now go to my students and say, and this makes everything very easy and they won't be confused as hell by this expression. So in, instead of saying uh, um, use cosine of uh, two pi, for, for example, because they have no fucking idea if two pi is radians or decrease, I'm just gonna say from now on, well, make use of the cosine of um, six pi squared divided by pi minus 180. You are gonna be good, <laughs> right? Because even if it's in radian or decrease, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Just one matter of fact that you need to take into account if you plug it um, into here, don't forget that we still have to decree um, to account for that because the decree symbol just means 180 divided by pi. So you actually need to multiply this expression by 180 divided by pi, okay, to get yourself the decree expression. But we just now found out that this is equal to the radian expression. So it, it really doesn't matter overall. But yeah, um, just if you're curious about the decree part right here, um, if you multiply this value by 180 divided by pi, you're still going to get the same thing out. And yeah, this basically concludes what I wanted to talk about. And I hope this fixes my problems and my mental instability when it comes to trigonometric stuff in school. And if you did enjoy what you've seen today, if you want to um, get more into trigonometry or anything we did here today, then the contents of today's sponsor Brian might be the perfect fit for you. Now, trigonometric functions are best understood if you take a look at them graphically. Like I did here, it's easy to see that the cosine is periodic because if you shift it 2 pi, 4 pi, whatever, to the left or right, you are going to get a regular cosine of any value you plug in there out. And Brilliant is seriously great at bringing STEM content, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, etc., to you in a very visual and playful manner. With the nearly 70 interactive courses and all topics STEM, you are gonna be enlightened once you go through all of those in each and everything you wanna know about mathematics, physics, etc. Be it general relativity, trigonometry, they got everything covered. And the best thing is you are gonna learn everything in a very visual manner, meaning no need to think about fields, for example, in an extremely abstract way. Brain makes it easy for you by presenting fields to you in a symmetric, graphically interpreted way. And the list goes on and on. It's not only that. If you take a look at momentum, for example, or the rocket equation or whatnot, everything will be visualized very nicely and in a very playful manner. And don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself by using my link at the top of the description, Prince org slash RambleMaps. With it, you are going to get a 30-day free trial of awesomeness. Take out the whole landscape of Brain for completely free and see if it's something for you. And if you feel like this could turn into a long-term relationship between you and their amazing product, then definitely make sure to make complete use of the link and get 20% off an annual premium subscription. It's an amazing deal. They have so much content 
just already available on the website and you are going to be enlightened as I mentioned before once you go through all of the courses in every STEM topic that you could possibly think of. You're going to be a big brain boy after that. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to NP Cooking for more very fun and enjoyable content. And up until next, we're wishing you guys a flamboyant day. See ya.